Welcome back to Talking with Ted about hiking. So there's a lot of hiking to do. And in Arizona, it is quite diverse. Lots of variety. So we're going to start a new series talking about that. We're going to start with Yavapai County. Within Yavapai County itself, the diversity uh, includes elevation, going from 2,000 feet around New River and in the Sonoran Desert to mixed conifer forests on Mount Union, which is just about 8,000 feet. That's within one county. Plus, there's all sorts of other variety related to the type of hike, the length of the hike, etc. So we're going to do a sampler today, seven hikes in Yavapai County. We're going to start at the top, which is Mount Union, all right? So you're going to take Walker Road out, six and a half miles past the Potato Patch, and you're going to turn left to on Poachers Road all the way to the end. It is in a neighborhood, and the parking is limited. We'll have pictures of the trailhead and a very rather rocky trail in parts. All right, so you're going to head east on Trail 285, and then you're going to come to a saddle which is north of the lookout tower on the summit. Okay, and that's trail 284. You're going to head south pretty much along the ridge to the lookout tower. Now, I've had several conversations with people in the lookout tower, so it's not always uh, operated with people in it, but uh, it offers some pretty spectacular views there or along that ridge once you hit trail 284. There isn't much surface water, so it just depends on precipitation and such, but this is a relatively short hike and it offers great views in season. Certain uh, flowers will be in view like geranium, which will show you Arizona honeysuckle, snowberry, all kinds of really neat things. Um, in the fall, I would not expect much fall color as it is mostly a mixed conifer vegetation type, all right? But this is the top of Yavapai County, and you're wanting to give it a shot because it is part of our great diversity within the county. Next, we're going to the bottom of the county. Now, the bottom of the county is generally around Lake Pleasant, New River, and this upper Sonoran Desert, okay? We've talked about the Black Canyon Trail, which ends down there in that vicinity. Okay, Agua Fria River comes out down there. So this particular section of the Black Canyon Trail is out of Rock Springs. So you're going to take the exit to Rock Springs off of Interstate 17, and there's a pretty sizable trailhead. There's a uh, toilet there. And on the weekends, it could be very crowded. So timing is going to be important. This is a very well-built trail. Now, the Black Canyon Trail, as you may have seen from our other video, is fairly civilized. It parallels Interstate 17. Uh, but this section is probably the wildest. And so you start through a gate from the parking lot. There's a ramp there for the mountain bikers. And you're going to parallel a ridge where you're going to have great views of the Sonoran Desert. How do you know you're in the Sonoran Desert? <laughs> saguaro cacti. If you have saguaro cacti, you are in the Sonoran Desert. Okay. This portion of the Sonoran Desert is called the Uplands portion. And in Arizona, there are two phases of the Sonoran Desert. This is the, the uh, most floristically diverse of the bunch. And so you'll have lots of trees like ironwood and palo verde and lots of cacti from saguaro to prickly pear to hedgehogs and, and uh, pen cushions and all kinds of things. So watch out for the rattlesnakes in season, which could actually be on any of these trails not any time of year, but you just have to have heads up. Don't wear headphones. Listen to what's going on around you. Pay attention, all right? Um, you'll get more out of the hike. Once you uh, cross this uh, ridge, which is gonna face south, then you're gonna drop to the Agua Fria River, 
And if it's like flowing much, it's going to be very tricky, maybe not even possible to cross to the other side to go now back up and then back south again to the Aguafria, Table Mesa Road, etc. But once you get west of New River, uh, trailhead there, you're going to get away from the traffic, away from the city, you know, Bl uh, Black Canyon City and so forth. All right, so it's going to be uh, very scenic in season. All right, so that's the bottom of Yavapai County. What's next? All right, the Red Rock Country of Sedona. And there's a hike there, Devil's Bridge. One of the libraries in the Yavapai Library Network on Dry Gulch Road, I believe. You're going to go past the library north, and there will be a trailhead there, which will take you either to a big parking area with a toilet and lots of spaces where the trail has recently been expanded where you're going to kind of arch to the north and we've got pictures of map of the trail and so forth. Or if you've got a pretty rugged vehicle you can continue past the parking area to the official trailhead for the arch. You could bicycle from the initial big trailhead around to that secondary trailhead but you cannot bicycle past that because the arch itself is in a federally designated wilderness area and bikes are not allowed in there. Mechanized equipment is a no-no. And besides, the trail goes pretty much up, uh, got a lot of steps involved, so, you know, may not be such a good biking part anyway. So leave that bike if you got one at the trailhead there and then hike up the rest of the way. It's a fairly short hike from there. The arch is pretty huge, massive. There's another little arch further up that road called Volte Arch, which is very small and minuscule compared to this one. But the views are incredible. Um, the back country of Sedona, uh, west of Wilson Mountain and all that, it is very, very amazing. So you'll want to scope it out. Now, when I was there, there was a very strange buzzing noise. Someone had a drone, and it was flying around taking pictures. It was kind of annoying, but sometimes that'll happen when you get in these kind of situations. Okay, so that's one of the expressions of technology that you may find on a hike uh, these days that didn't used to happen. Technology is changing a lot of things in the hiking world like everywhere else, libraries and banks and restaurants and hotels, technology is something to use as a tool. I don't consider it a toy, but some people do. All right, so now we're going to go south on Highway 89 south of Prescott to towards Wickenburg, all right, to Yarnell. All right, now the Granite Mountain Hotshot Memorial Trail in Yavapai County, right uh, past Yarnell, is very unique. It's very distinctive. And of course, there are several aspects to this trail. It is a memorial to the 19 firefighters that lost their life. And so as you hike along from the very small parking lot, as you descend, uh, the road towards Wickenburg. The trail goes up and then it skirts along the west side of the mountains. So the views are quite amazing. All right. And of course a fire came through there in 2013 so and it wasn't very wooded anyway it was pretty chaparral you know this is a really a great full moon hike in the summer. Um, by the way, which of course is more of a rattlesnake exposure time too, so just again, heads up. So, the views are great, these memorials, uh, plaques will talk about each of the firefighters all the way down to an area uh, that's been set up with various uh, a rock uh, uh, circle and a bench and some other uh, information about the fire. 
there's information uh, uh, benches along the route as well talking about fire, the role of fire, the impact of fire, the recovery from fire. Fire is a big deal in the southwest so this is a, a, a hike that you're just not gonna run up there and do it. Okay, you're gonna want to take your time, you're gonna want to and remember there's no shade so it's not a great hike in the afternoon in the summer. It's not particularly long of a hike, three miles or so, probably to where the incident was where the fire um, ended their lives. But, you know, be aware, it's going to be hot in the summer, not the ideal time. Okay, all right, so that's the Granite Mountain Hot Shot Memorial Trail, Arizona State Park. Now, the problem with the trailhead is, if you approach a trailhead after you go through Yarnell and there's no places to park, you have to go all the way down the hill before you can turn back around and come back up and try to do something else. There's a crossover area uh, east of the official trailhead and then you can walk from there on the road to the trailhead to get the trail. Um, not ideal, so just bear that in mind. Uh, timing's going to be important. There's only about a dozen parking spaces there, so if you come at the wrong time, it's going to be a, an issue. You're going to have to, again, go all the way back down and come back up uh, and then deal with that in some fashion. There is an overlook parking as well, which is a little bit closer than the crossover. A memorial to Arizona Highways. Um, but anyway, then you still have to walk along the road to get to the trailhead and the trail, all right, which is not very fun because it's highway. All right. Now, we're going to go to a different trail, and that is Woods Canyon. Woods Canyon actually starts in Coconino County, about seven or so miles north of the Sedona turnoff, but it's going to end in Yavapai County near the ranger station at the village of Oak Creek, south of Sedona on Highway 179. Okay. And then these uh, pictures will include has a map, profile, and the location of where this hike, these hikes are. All right. So, but if you're going to do this slot canyon, it took, I think I took three days. It's a very serious uh, hike. Uh, not all of the narrows are filled with water, but there are several, probably at least a half a dozen ponds you're going to have to negotiate, all right? And once you get in there, this is a kind of a hike where you are committed. If you decide you got to get out halfway through, it's not going to be a pretty picture because coming out of that canyon, it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's not going to be good. The timing for this hike is going to be real critical uh, between middle of April, middle of May. Earlier than that, it could be flooding, uh, where I went in there with my nephew, spring break, bad idea, didn't work. We had to stay out of the canyon up on the ridge. Later I came in early May and it gets very hot and dry so it's just very tricky when it's going to work for you depending on snow melt and so forth. There's a book about, uh, of course library thing, the books you know about slot canyons in Arizona and it says that this pond which is about 75 yards long is the coldest one they cover in the book and you should wear a dry suit. Which is pretty ridiculous. So I didn't do that. Didn't have a wetsuit or anything. So it's a very cold, long swim and you're going to have to get a, of course, uh, inflatable air mattress, float your pack, get it in a big bag, it doesn't get wet and push it as you swim several of these ponds, okay? Um, so there's not really trail up at the top portion, you're just bushwhacking along the canyon bottom. But the views are incredible, vegetation uh, is amazing, there's a Sanagua uh, ruin along the way, so there's all kinds of things to get in on. This is about a, I don't know, 30 mile hike at least so but it's very representative of the best of serious slot canyons in Arizona 
right here in Yavapai County. Of course, you could hike from either end a couple of miles and then come back out. You don't have to go through the whole thing at any particular uh, hike, but that's to get the whole experience. You're going to have to really consider carefully what you're getting yourself into. Okay, Woods Canyon coming out of the village of Oak Creek near the ranger station south of Sedona. Okay, next we're going to shift gears to a long trail. This is the Prescott Circle Trail and it is a 55 mile trail that circles Prescott, hence the name Prescott Circle Trail. Prescott National Forest, get it? All right. So it's a circle and there's all kinds of trailheads, Granite Basin area, Iron Springs Road, Thumb Butte, um, a Turley Trailhead near Pea Mountain, uh, near the Walmart, uh, off Pioneer Parkway, um, uh, White Spar Campground, south of 89, uh, Copper uh, Basin Road, I guess, uh, southwest of Prescott. So there's all kinds of places that you could start the circle. Um, you don't have to do the whole circle at once. I've done the whole thing in its entirety 15 times. Lately, I piecemeal it, put it together up and back. Uh, the west side, I consider the wild side. That's forested and is actually more of a trail. The east and um, north side, you'll see the rooftops from Pea Mountain of Frontier Village. Okay, not exactly the most ideal hiking scenery. Okay, so and of course you don't have to do the whole thing. It also has trailheads of Watson Lake, Willow Lake. So you can pick and choose, do a little here, and eventually piece it together. But it represents a very well thought out, well built trail. Some parts of it, if you're biking it especially, like around uh, Iron Springs Road to Granite Basin Road, is one Forest Service person that was building this thing called that the ice cream section of the trail is kind of just very pleasant like a roller coaster of course you have to come back up the you know other side too so but forested uh, shady on the west side rather open chaparral sunny I believe all of the trailheads are free except for the Watson Lake trailhead there will be a fee to park there and if you were to park on the Peavine Trailhead there too, there would be a fee as well. So otherwise, you could park. There is no parking allowed where it crosses by Thumb Butte. So you gotta, you know, think it through. And there's some maps uh, that are very good that will include to give you a heads up on where to start, where to stop, Watson Lake, uh, so forth. The uh, Facilities there, restroom, drinking fountain. So there's all kinds of ways to think this through. Sometimes in the winter, though, the water there is shut off. So you have to know what's going on. Lots of great wildlife. I've seen bobcats, uh, pronghorn antelope, etc. So um, very nice trail. We're very fortunate to have it right at our doorstep. All right, we're going to conclude with Grapevine Canyon. And we've got a little video clip of Grapevine Canyon, which we will uh, illustrate what's going on right now after the Goodwin Fire. So I'm going through there occasionally and documenting the recovery from the Goodwin Fire. came through there in 2017. Again, as I mentioned earlier, fire is a big deal in the Southwest, and many of these trails give you an opportunity to see what happens to the land with wildfire, all right? So the land recovers, it's resilient, it may take time. And when the fire first goes through there, it's pretty ugly, it's pretty devastating. You hike in the black. Sometimes when the trees are still smoldering, it's a very strange experience. I've hiked in some desolate places, where there's nothing because it's all sand dunes. Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado, White Sands National Park in New Mexico, and there's nothing but sand for miles. This is very different. I hiked through there after the fire, and a group of turkeys was running away from me to hide, and they went off in the bushes to hide. 
There were no bushes, but they did it anyway. It's just very weird. There was a very big black rattlesnake in there too, and I'm telling them, what are you doing in here? There's nothing for you to eat. There was a hawk circling overhead. I think it was going to eat the rattlesnake. So anyway, it all works out. Um, there's still water in there at times. Uh, the video clip that we've got, unfortunately the waterfall was not flowing. Sometimes it has an ice column, and I've got uh, some pictures of that. So it's a place that you don't want to miss. Now it's a designated botanical area. The trailhead is right uh, before you get uh, between Mayer and Poland Junction. I usually park about a mile and a half before the actual trailhead because the road gets pretty rough. So you get a high clearance vehicle and I'll usually bicycle that last mile and a half. Okay, it's through Chaparral, it's about 5,000 feet there. Up at the top of the waterfall, it's probably 6,500 feet, so you're gonna have lots of incline coming up this canyon, but you're gonna start in Chaparral and end up in a Ponderosa Pine Forest. And of course, it's a riparian area, so the water will be flowing through there, there'll be really cool columbines and all kinds of other flowers red sink foil, it is totally beautiful, some really good stand of poison ivy at the base of the waterfall, okay? So that's what we have for you, the diversity of hiking just within Yavapai County. If you're in some places across the country, Montana, Colorado, Kansas, Florida, you wouldn't have this much diversity across the entire state within our own county. This is the place to hike. You never need to hibernate in Arizona or even in the county. If it's cold and snowy, you don't like it, you don't want to hike in that, you can hike in the Sonoran Desert within this county. If it's hot and sweaty, like it is a lot of the times in the summer, you can go up in the pine forest. So you can get shade, you can get water somewhere. Think it through. Don't stop. Keep hiking. Where are we going to hike next? Stick around. And we will show you how the diversity will expand across the state, within the Grand Canyon, etc. Come by the library and find resources to help you figure some of this out. Or call with questions, Spring Valley Library, 928-717-8118. See you on the trail.